Everything about the children's version of the popular Rugrat cartoon series is big. The US-based production cost $6 million to set up and the 78 cast and crew members transport the show in 10 semi-trailers. Oh, it's a multi-million dollar. I mean, there's this. It, when this was, show was created, it was state of the art. All the projections are run by computer, and the sound system is run by computer. And it's proving big business in Newcastle. At eighty-six dollars a family ticket, fifty dollars for the plush toy, or ten for a program. But the kids love it. Take home a souvenir, two, or three, or four, or six, or whatever. <laughs> Tomorrow's performance at the Newcastle Entertainment Centre starts at one o'clock. Paul Lobb. NBN News. Long weekends are traditionally a nightmare for emergency services such as the Westpac Rescue Helicopter and this Easter was no exception, the five day stretch marking Westpac's busiest holiday period in 25 years. Traditionally the Easter period is actually busier than Christmas and uh, by far uh, we expected Easter to be quite busy but um, this period alone has been the busiest Easter or busiest long weekend period in the history of the service. The telltale signs were evident on Good Friday when the chopper was called to winch a 53-year-old fisherman stranded in a remote coastal inlet near Fingal Bay. The rescue mission won of six that day. With the good weather that we've enjoyed over the Easter period, we've had uh, quite a lot of people out and about on the water and enjoying their recreational activities and, and unfortunately while ever people are out and about doing those sort of stuff, we're going to be kept in the job. With a clash against the storm on the horizon, skipper Tony Butterfield is happy to be back after a frustrating stint on the sideline with suspension. No, it's very hard, particularly um, given the, uh, the, the the fact the team has struggled with depth. Uh, you know, we need all hands on deck and uh, I haven't been able to lend a hand and that's been disappointing from my point of view. While he'll be fresh, he hopes the storm may be a little underdone after representative commitments and today's match. Yeah, we won't go too much into our detail as far as the game plan, but um, we'll be looking to make every post a winner. Also returning, centre Matt Gidley, who's been recovering from a groin problem. Gidley joins Mark Hughes in the centres, with Danny Baderas again at half-back, Lenny Beckett on the wing. Butterfield comes straight into the starting side, despite strong games by Matt Parsons, while Tamana Tahu is named on a five-man bench. Well, I think Lenny, Lenny Beckett's safety and the things he's done for us, I just think he deserves a bit of recognition for it. He, he's been terrific. tamar has been uh, was good a few weeks ago. He's had a couple of um, you know a couple of ordinary games. Peter Shields is still recovering from a hip problem, while Glenn Grief will have rib X rays tomorrow. Both are expected to play a side that all knights love to meet. Well, I think it's going to be a really tough game, though. They always are, like because they get a lot of Newcastle players in their side as well, so. Yeah, bit of a grudge match, I suppose. Rescue crews were called to the horrific accident which halted traffic just three kilometres north of Dungog shortly after four o'clock. It appears this Toyota Ute carrying two local teenagers was heading north on Chichester Road when it collided head-on with a cattle truck on the Bendolba stretch. The 55-year-old truck driver escaped with minor injuries but rescue crews were forced to cut their way into the utility, releasing the 17-year-old male driver with minor injuries. His male passenger wasn't so lucky receiving head injuries and multiple fractures in his right leg. He was airlifted to the John Hunter Hospital where he remains in a serious condition. Meanwhile, holidaymakers heading home in the Pacific Highway have to contend with the usual traffic bottleneck just north of Karua this evening. A minor accident north of the Tea Gardens turn off this afternoon didn't help matters either. Despite the delays, police are once again urging drivers to keep their frustrations to a minimum.
Minmai residents met today to hear how the National Parks and Wildlife Service will include the old mine in a new recreation area. This is the whole concept about regional parks is that they are an opportunity to transform areas that have been exploited and abused by various land management practices in the past. Three million dollars will be spent on the project over three years. It's a joint venture with Newcastle Council and the state government. Waste products from a new facility will be used to fill the old mine over the next 10 years. It's designed to recycle uh, concrete and, and bricks and so forth and it's here because that's where the hole is. If the hole wasn't there to put the materials in, well then the plant wouldn't be there. With the recycling centre to be built within 400 metres of the nearest house, residents are concerned that it could involve as many as 170 truck movements per week. I'm particularly concerned with how much extra uh, weight on the road that's going to cause, what sort of disruption noise-wise, how it's going to affect the, the children in the schools, everything like that is. While residents looked over different areas that will form the park, the Lord Mayor of Newcastle made it clear that the old open-cut mine must be filled to make it safe and that any inconvenience will be worthwhile. We should be concentrating on the positives and whilst it's being developed there will be these times when we have to put up with things but in the meantime we're going to end up with a very, very wonderful resource for this area, for the whole of Newcastle. The night wasn't all that old, but for Clayton Priest, it was over and out, a bit too early, in a spectacular spill. He's OK, his litre car not so good. In the super sedans, a new generation has been wowing the crowds this season. The same names, but new faces, with Luke Pine and David Robertson living up to their famous family tradition. For 18-year-old Luke, he held things together to finish behind Russell Bailey in the feature, but it was enough to win him the overall title. In Daylight Hours, Mangrove Mountains Country Club is a welcome place for the public, but at night it seems to be a target. Last night, two men, one armed with what appeared to be a shotgun, approached an employee in the car park who had just locked up. The bandits put a bag over the man's head and ordered him to open the doors and deactivate any alarms. The pair then made off with a large amount of cash. Meanwhile, at Lake Macquarie, a general store at Swansea also fell victim to armed invaders overnight. At around 7pm, shop owners were confronted by three masked robbers, two armed with knives, a third armed with a gun. The owners managed to retreat into their adjoining home and locked themselves in while the thieves raided the store. The three bandits made off with a small amount of cash. Adam Harper, NBN News. It's taken $300,000 for St Vincent de Paul to restore this 1928 building. All proceeds came from fundraising and donations. Eleven people will benefit from the upgrade, university and TAFE students to use the facility as accommodation. So it's going to be a great service offered to young people and maybe mature A students as well. Already the building has two tenants, nine rooms are still open for students. Affectionately named Vinnie's Lodge, the building was blessed this afternoon by Newcastle and Maitland's Bishop, Michael Malone. Meanwhile at Spears Point, the annual Environfest kicked off this morning. With 2,000 trees to give away, the crowds flocked, and a host of environment groups also joined the ranks, teaching those interested how to care for our fragile environment. Adam Harper, NBN News.
childhood diseases like polio may have vanished, but for a growing number of young people, there's another serious threat. Asthma is affecting more children than ever. As many as one in three children in Australia are sufferers. It must be to do with the environment that we live in. The, the sort of things that, that are being looked at at the moment are passive smoking, so particularly uh, in the early years of life, in infants who are exposed to, to passive smoke. While Ventolin remains the most popular treatment for sufferers, new methods such as Boteco breathing are now being used. There's always room for new approaches to asthma, providing their approach they are approaches that have been shown to be effective. It's also been found that women between the ages of 15 and 40 are three times more likely to be admitted to hospital suffering a serious attack. Researchers at Newcastle's John Hunter Hospital are doing their bit to find out just why they are more susceptible. We're trying to find out why that's happening and we're looking at the effect of the menstrual cycle, whether hormones trigger off attacks of asthma. Researchers are also investigating whether a fungus called Aspergillus affects the severity of asthmatic attacks. Tanya Carlisle, NBN News. given them details of, and documentation as to what we think our benefits could be and the synergies between the two organisations. Twenty-four-year-old Kyle and his 19-year-old sister Lisa are one of the only brother-sister combinations in Australia performing burnouts as a family. And it seems that they're taking the burnout pad by storm. I've come second in the Nationals in February and I've come in the latest first I've come last week and the week before in first place. As a delivery driver, Lisa only vents her road rage on weekends for 90 seconds. After that, can't use a good streetcar on the street doing stuff like this, so you build something, come here, go home. As brother and sister, it could be expected that there would be some family rivalry, but the real thrill of the burnout doesn't come from the challenges. Smelling the smoke, feeling two tyres going bang bang. That's it. Car drops down, you know, you, you know what you're coming here for. Kyle and Lisa will both be making an appearance this weekend at the Newcastle Speedway. Adam Harper, NBN News. In medical terms, Newcastle has it all, but a gap in the emotional and social aspects of care led Mater Hospital staff to call for a support service to be established. That it's hard to get well when you're worrying yourself sick about whether or not you're going to be able to hang on to your house or who's looking after your children. And Newcastle is the perfect place to start the service, with the area already renowned for its support for a good cause. Shell Heath from Stockton is officially not just the best fundraiser in the region, but also the country, after raising more than $30,000 for Shave for a Cure. And it's hoped support like this will be catching. It will expand the services obviously within the Hunter. Uh, I'd love to be able to think that we might be able to establish some accommoda accommodation units to be able to support people locally, but we will now build other support groups throughout the rest of the state. 
Brooke Webster, NBN News. Last week, the Newcastle Knights were horribly under strength. Andrew Johns and Matthew Gidley among those on the injury list. But as the team gears up to take on Penrith this Sunday, players are returning to health and the field. I think just the break from not tackling and not, not doing that sideways movement has done a lot for it. So, like I said, you know, fingers crossed I'll come through Sunday all right. And stepping up from reserve grade for the first time, 19-year-old Daniel Abraham, who will don the number one jersey. I'm still learning as it is from the uh, reserve grade fellas and the coach and that, but to step up to these fellas, I'd say I'm going to learn a lot more. While it might be a learning experience for the young player, he'll be surrounded by an almost full strength squad. Well, we've got most of the boys back. I think uh, we've got you know, Glenn Grief back from last week, Sean Rudder, uh, you know, and of course Andrew Johns you know, he's, he's, he's coming back this week. So touch wood, I hope, hope all the boys and myself you know, can, can get through this game you know, um, you know, without any, any more injuries. Adam Harper. NBN News. There's been many complaints from coaching staff from most of the NRL teams, but in particular Brisbane. Wayne Bennett saying that the Broncos won't win a game during the State of Origin series. They play the Raiders, the Storm and Newcastle with their depleted side and will struggle, but so will other teams like the Storm, Newcastle and Cronulla Sharks. But one team who depends so much on their halves to win their games is the Roosters who will be without Fitler and Lamb for the weekend's clash against West Tigers. The Roosters are trying to win four in a row, which is a credit to them after their up and down win-loss start to the season. Now, Craig Wing is the player who will be forced to play half-back to cover Lamb, and this will be the first time in his career that he'll take on the organiser's role, which will make it hard for the Roosters to obtain any effective attacking patterns of play. With that in mind, the fact that there is no split rounds means that there is a rare opportunity for teams not affected by a state of origin duty to take advantage of playing understrength teams and leapfrog up the ladder. So the players of the week and Tim Brasher scores his 100th try with style against the Dragons and Jimmy Dimmick owns the pass of the week award by brushing his Parramatta teammates preferring for Kevin Campion from the Broncos. To the round 14 tips and the Broncos travel to Bruce Stadium with only a half a side should see the Raiders back on track. The Knights to beat Penrith despite the fact that they've lost their last four games in a row and will be desperate to win. I think the Dragons can turn it around now that the man has gone and they will beat the Warriors at their beloved Wynn Stadium. West Tigers, North Queensland, Cronulla Sharks and Parramatta to win their games. Good luck to the Blues on Wednesday night. Go boys and uh, it's back to you Rabs.
the number of new jobs which have been created in the region is sufficient to absorb those new entrants and help reduce the region's unemployment rate, and that's now come down to 8.7%. After months of protest by residents, Belmont 16 Footers Sailing Club agreed to take one level from both the east and west car parks in its three-storey, 500 space development. Well, the board of directors made the decision to alter the original plan. It's a new development application which has gone into the Lake Macquarie City Council. Well, maybe not that new. The three-storey car parking uh, plans that went in in December of last year are dated the 13th of December. This new resubmitted plan showing two storeys uh, that was submitted only this month, this set of plans was drawn before the second set of plans that were the first ones put in. The Friends of Lake Macquarie say both versions of the development application were obtained from the council where they are on public display. Spokesperson Mark Hellier can't call the height reduction in the latest DA lodged a compromise by the club or a win for his protest group. These are the set of plans I think that um, Belmont Club wanted to get passed in the first place and they were kite flying with the first one. The club says its most recent submission to council will be better for residents. The, uh, the so-called concrete monstrosity they were talking about certainly uh, won't be nearly as big as it would have been with the initial plan. With the competition watchdog investigating a complaint by Impulse against Qantas for unfair conduct, there's no love lost between the airlines. And with the new Qantas jet expected to land, an Impulse plane was doing a touch of landing practice of its own. Still, Qantas's new British Aerospace 246-200 series arrived as scheduled. Basically what we're doing is we're charging good competitive fares that I have to add have been in the marketplace as well. A full range of fares have been in the marketplace for a long time. With four jet engines, the new aircraft cruises at 750 kilometres an hour and can fly 76 passengers from Brisbane in 61 minutes and from Melbourne in less than 90. The May Day March in Newcastle is just one symbol of solidarity amongst labour movements around the world. But the drums in front of the Hunters marching ALP members may well be signalling an internal war as they struggle to stop their government's corporatisation of Pacific Power. Yesterday, state members were briefed by right-wing Labor Treasurer Michael Egan on the plan to break up the energy giant into three groups which will see Araring Power Station and Power Coal stand alone. The member for Swansea says most Hunter and Central Coast members fear jobs will go in the process. The government is saying something like 300. Uh, the unions are giving uh, larger figures. A spokesperson from Michael Egan's office says the purpose of the corporatisation is to secure the long-term viability of Power Coal and Pacific Power. He says the government is working with unions to ensure that jobs are saved rather than lost. David McIlwain, NBN News. Fire crews from Morpeth, Maitland and East Maitland rushed to the Louth Park Road house at around 3 o'clock this morning after neighbours raised the alarm with a triple O call. On arrival they found the roof of the timber brick and iron cottage on fire with smoke billowing from the roof. Oh, approximately about an hour to get it out. 
they had to take the roof, the tin off the roof to um, get to the fire. Squatting in the home at the time was a young couple with a baby. It's believed they lit a fire in the fireplace. And as the house didn't have a chimney, it soon spread to the roof. Fed up with vagrants squatting in the house, neighbours are getting a petition together to present to Maitland Council. They want the house demolished. There's been quite a few people living in the house of a night time. The house has been empty now for approximately four months and it is quite a nuisance. Tanya Carlisle, NBN News. On impulse, we don't give you food you can't eat. On impulse, we don't give you frequent flyer points you can't use when you want to. However, what we are offering is a no, restricted, no restrictions on our fare on the youngest fleet of air aircraft in this country. Pedestrians wanting to cross the roads between Union and Kenrick streets can now cross in any direction, including diagonally. It means less time spent waiting at the lights. It's easier for pedestrians and also obviously uh, should not compromise in any way the free flow of traffic through the junction. The new traffic signal system aims to make crossing the road between busy shopping and service areas easier and safer. But the idea of all walk signals operating simultaneously in both directions may take some getting used to. 
I think it will take a while though for both pedestrians and motorists to get used to the fact that when the traffic lights go red, that they go red in all directions. A three-month trial of the system has begun and comments either for or against its implementation is being welcomed. The RTA are particularly asking the public to comment on the crossing, whether it helps them, whether they find any difficulties with it. It will then be decided whether or not to make the crossing a permanent fixture in the junction or introduce it to other suburbs. Brooke Webster, NBN News.